morning. Well, this morning we're actually going to be wrapping up talking about discovering love. It's not going to be the last time that we ever talk about love, but we've been in this series called Discovering Love and been really focused in so that we could take a 40-day journey, especially through using our, our journey teams, our community groups, to where they're going to come in, and they're going to spend time together, and they're going to be growing through this even more. And so this has been a 40-day journey for us. And so this is Sunday number six, week number six of Discovering Love. We launched this whole series with this idea of love matters most. And when it came to this idea of pushing this out and launching this with love matters most, we said this. We said the best use of life is love. We looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, that says, let love be your highest goal, that that would be the highest thing that we would aim for, that we would strive for with our life. We talked about worth the love as, as week two. It's, it's just looking at, there's different people. They're just, they're hard to love. We talked about these EGR people, these extra grace required people. And that, that we do, we need to love them even when there's extra grace required. That everybody needs to be loved and so that we should love all people. And are they worth the love? And, and we looked at what Jesus did. Jesus gave his life so that anyone who would believe in him that they would be able to have eternity with their Heavenly Father. Worth the love. Jesus said a resounding yes. We looked at loving others with your words. And loving others with your words, James taught for us. And, and that week, the, the thing that was taught and emphasized was that there's three types of words that we need to use when we're dealing with people and when we want to make sure that we're loving them. We need to have honest words. We need to have careful words. And we need to have building words. And we don't get to pick and choose which one we want to do in that moment. Because it needs to be a combination of all three that we would use all three of these types of words. Honest, careful, and building. We looked at this idea of love lets it go. That love lets it go. And when we looked at this idea of love lets it go, we spent some time looking at not just what is love, but we spent some time looking at what love is not. We looked at this teaching from Paul that, that when he was teaching on love, there was only five things that he taught us about what love is, but there was ten things that he taught us about what love is not. And what we got to see within that was, was that if we're going to love people, that we're going to have to forgive people. Because love lets it go, and that's what it does. It forgives. That's what love does. Last week we looked at, at the idea in this teaching that love is not easily angered. That we all get angry at times. And when it comes to the subject of anger, anger is not the problem. Anger is not a sin in and of itself. How somebody reacts with their anger, what they do with their anger could be a sin. That could be harmful against others. Not, not being who God would want them to be within their anger. But, but anger is not the root problem. The problem is how we handle it. And when we don't handle our anger well, and when we use our anger against people, and we do it in an unjustified way, there's always a price. That there's always a price tag for anger. And we looked at, at these three price tags for anger last week. We looked at the, the very first price tag, which is when anger is on sale. And, and that is that you get more anger. That when you're angry in an unjustified way or in a, in a hurtful way, that what's going to end up happening is, is the person that you're angry with, they're going to get angry. That when they push back, you're going to get more angry, and you just get more anger. If things don't calm down from there, then the price goes up. And the next price that gets paid with anger is apathy. To where somebody just wants to shut down in that moment and just get to the point where they just don't care, whatever. But then the third price, which is the most expensive price tag, is alienation. And where you just want to go and you want to physically separate yourself. It's no longer enough to be physically present but emotionally checked out. That you need to be completely alienated from others. And this week we're going to talk about unlocking lasting love. And so with a, with a, with a heading like this, with a title like this, it's easy to begin to ask the question and ponder and go, is this... Is this going to be a, a marriage talk? Is this going to be about, about marriage kind of love? Or, or is this going to be one of those, one of those topics that, that can hit and catch everything? 
Is it talking about my family as a whole, my extended family? Is it talking about my friends, my really close friends? Is it talking about just my, my social acquaintances? Or is it talking about my neighbors? What, what kind of love are we talking about when we're talking about unlocking lasting love? And the answer to that question is yes. Yes. That, that we're going to be looking at all of it. And there's going to be some times where we're going to emphasize and we're going to hone in on marriage itself. But this is talking about love as a whole. You know, we live in a, in a time and in a culture that is constantly shifting. It's constantly changing. It's what we get to see with culture. That there's lots of changes that are just always taking place. But yet there's some things that stay the same, they remain the same, no matter how much change we see within our culture. And I think one of the things that remains the same that never changes is that people are longing for lasting love. No matter what society does, no matter what culture you find yourself in, people are looking for lasting love. It is a constant that never changes as our society changes. And as we look for lasting love, we must understand this, that God is the only reliable, dependable, always worthy love that is out there. He is. And, and yet we can try and we can be on our best most of the time, but God's steadfast with his love for us. We can tend to waver at times. And God never does. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 11, we read, This is the message that you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. So that's the message to us. Hey, what should we do today? We need to love one another. Hey, what do you want to plan to do next week? Let's make sure we're planning to love one another. That, that this is what we would be about. That we would make this our major focus in life. Love. That we would love God. And that we would love people. Because people are desperately looking for a love that never ends. And let's be the best that we can be at loving people. And let's help point them to the Heavenly Father that is the perfect love so that they can see that, that even though we can try to love, we're not going to be perfect. But the Heavenly Father's love is a perfect love. You know, if we're going to build a love that lasts a lifetime, there's some things that we're going to have to overcome. There are some things that, that we're going to have to overcome in our relationships and our dealings with people if we're going to build a love that's going to last a lifetime. And what I want to share with you this morning regarding this is I want to share with you the 10 deadly D's of relationship. Now, these aren't going to be on, on the screen. You're not going to be able to see them there, but they're short. They're quick. You're going to be able to take notes of these if you want to take notes. But the 10 deadly D's in a relationship. And they're not in any particular order. So here they are. Number one is difficulties. Difficulties. What are the difficulties? The difficulties, they're the uninvited circumstances that come in. Those are the difficulties that end up creeping in. They creep into a marriage. They creep into a friendship. They, they creep into extended family relationships. Difficulties, these uninvited circumstances, they creep in. Another deadly D is differences. Differences. That, that no two people are going to be aligned and in sync with every single thing. We're not. And there's going to be differences that are going to come, come along, and we're going to have different opinions. And the harder we stand on our opinion that differs with another, the greater the differences are going to be, and the harder it's going to be to work through the differences. And this is where they can become deadly. Number three is disappointments. Disappointments. When it comes to disappointments, we, we all have things that, that we end up desiring from others or desiring in the relationship. Some of us even say, no, no, it's not just a desire. It is an expectation. And we have these. And whenever our desires or whenever our expectations, whenever they're not met, this is when we have our disappointments in the friendship, in the family, in the marriage, and we end up having the hardship of the disappointment. Number four is doubts. 
doubt. When we begin to doubt, is the relationship worth it? Is the relationship worth putting more time and more effort and more energy into? Is the relationship worth it? And we begin to have some doubts, and doubts is one of the deadly deeds. Number five is demands. It's demands. And whenever there's demands, demands derail teamwork. When it comes to these demands that end up coming along, is companionship is crippled by demands. We don't naturally respond well to the demands of others. And it creates difficulties. It creates hardships for the relationships. Number six, despair. Despair. And when it comes to despair, despair is when there is no more hope. That, that you cannot see any hope moving forward. It, it just seems like whatever you do, there's just no positive response. And it is a state of despair. When it comes to looking at these deadly deeds, let's move on. Number seven. Number seven is discouragement. And discouragement is when you try everything that you know just to keep peace, to make everybody happy, to please everyone. And, and you take a step forward, and then next thing you know, you took three steps back. That for every step forward, it seems like you're trying to make, you're trying to make progress. You see three steps going backwards, and it is very discouraging. And discouragement is one of the deadly deeds when it comes to relationships. Dejection. Dejection, number eight. That whenever we feel dejected, our, our spirits just sink low. And as our spirits sink low, it, it's just at this point, whenever there's dejection, everything is looked at through a negative lens. It, everything just becomes negative once you reach the point of dejection. And it is deadly. Number nine, distraction. Distraction. How are distractions so deadly? The distractions are deadly because sometimes we get distracted and we start seeing or doing something and we let that take a higher priority than the relationship. And we just got distracted. We didn't even realize that we were going to get there and that's the priority it was going to end up becoming. And we just get distracted. Whether it's a career, whether it's a hobby, whether it's another friendship, whatever it is, the distractions can be deadly to the relationship. And number 10 is distrust. Distrust. Whether you realize this or not, trust is the currency of relationship. It's the currency of relationship. It, it's what we are there to exchange back and forth. And when you run out of the currency of trust, it is really hard. To recover in a relationship. That there are some things that we can do and, and try to build that trust back, but, but once you run out of this currency, it is really difficult to get that trust back. That distrust is a deadly deed. And when it comes to marriages, when marriages suffer from too many of these for too long, then the deadly deeds lead to the big D, divorce. So we've got to recognize that there's these deadly deeds and they're out there and they're working against the relationship. And what can we do to work in a way that we can diffuse them, that we can make love this lasting kind of love? How do we begin to unlock lasting love? So that's what we're going to talk about is this idea of lasting love. So lasting love. Let me give you four things when it comes to lasting love. First thing is lasting love. It extends love grace. That's what lasting love does. If there's going to be love that's going to last and it's going to go the distance, then, then you're going to have to, at, at times, extend grace. Because we're all going to mess up. We're all going to screw up. We're all going to do something detrimental. And so we have to extend grace in any relationship worth having. It's going to have difficulties at times. It's going to have issues at times. And any relationship worth keeping is only going to be kept if we're willing to extend the grace 
that is necessary. Now, when it comes to, to this whole idea of extending grace, is, is why, why is this so essential to relationships? Why, why is it so important that we have to extend grace to other people? Well, let me tell you a little something about these other people. I don't want to talk about you. I just want to talk about the other people, okay? And so when it comes to the other people, there, there's one reason in particular that we have to extend grace to others. Just looking at them, just, you know, don't think about yourself right now. Just think about everybody else. And the one th- reason that we have to extend grace to others is because everyone else is a sinner. Everyone else sins. Everyone else falls short of God's standard for life and the way that they react and interact with Him, the way they react and interact with people. They're all sinners. And so since everybody else around you is a sinner, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to extend grace at different times. And by the way, we're sinners too. That you're a sinner, I'm a sinner. And it's not like, wouldn't you like to be a sinner too? Because we already all are. We're all sinners. And it's not that we just get, get up and down and get excited. And go, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. It's not that we get excited about it. It's not that we just get to the point where it's just like, hey, well, just you got to blow me off because I'm a sinner, but then you got to extend grace to me because, hey, we're all, we don't just blow it off. We are sinners. But we shouldn't use that as an excuse to just live life however we want to. We need to be reminded that, oh, you know what? You went the wrong way. Okay, get back on track. And when we extend grace, it's something that when there's genuine love, that that's going to be what's being used to help get them back on track track and that the relationship can move forward positively when it comes to grace know this that grace is perfect for imperfection it is the grace is the perfect thing for imperfect people and it's why we need to extend it paul was teaching the church in ephesus when we read this in ephesians chapter 4 verse 2 It says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Why would I extend grace? Why would I make allowance? Because of your love. This is what we do when we love. Lasting love isn't a destination, but a journey filled with unwanted detours. That there's going to be these unwanted detours that that we didn't want. But it's a journey to have lasting love. Every friendship, every marriage, every family, every working relationship is going to require us to extend love, if the extend grace if the love is going to last. Number two is lasting love expresses trust. And you might be thinking, don't, don't, don't you mean that lasting love experiences trust? What I mean is lasting love expresses trust. That's what I mean. And that, that love that lasts a lifetime, if we're going to unlock this where we're going to have lasting love, then we have to be people that what we are doing is we are expressing love to others. That if you want to build a lasting relationship, if you want to build a relationship where the love is going to continue to grow, then you have to express trust. And you might be thinking, oh, well, I, I can't. I can't express trust like that. If, if you knew what he did, or if you knew what she did, you wouldn't be telling me this. And you'd be going, you're going, I can't express trust. And if you're at that place where right now you're just going, hey, there's somebody in my life that I'm supposed to love. I even want to love. I I even think I might love them. I'm just so mad at them right now that I don't know if I can trust them. Then where you need to start is you need to start by trusting God. That's where you need to start. You need to trust God. Go, okay, God, you've got a plan. And I'm going to trust you, and I need to know how is it 
but I need to be living my life and loving these people that you've put in my life. And you need to start by trusting God. If you can't trust your husband, if you can't trust your wife, if you can't trust your kids, you're looking at it and you're going, there's just history here, Will. And there's, there's too much where, where there's been times that they've just proven that they can't be trusted. We need to trust. There's an interesting psychology that ends up taking place when it comes to trust. There's an interesting dynamic that ends up happening when you begin to express trust to others. I know, I know it's hard because you might be going, hey, I, I've tried. I, I've, I've tried to express trust. But every time he goes to Best Buy, I can't trust him with the money. I can't. I've, I've tried. We've sat down and we agreed this is the budget, right? This is what we're going to live within, right? This is the parameter. You agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, we're all good, right? Pinky swear? You know, and, and we get there and we're like, okay, this is what we're going to live by. But then two hours passes. And then there's just opportunity. And maybe it's like going, oh, no, no, Will, I, you're, the, you're the husband. You're, you're the man in the relationship. You're going, no, 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 it's not my trips to Best Buy. It's her trips to the mall. That's, that's where the issue, I, I can't trust her. When she says she's going to the mall, I have to stop her and go, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Give me your purse. And you dig in there and you hand her her driver's license. There you go. I'll keep this safe right here. I can't trust her. And you get to this place where you can't trust. And whether it's trusting about finances, whether it's trusting that, that that desire of intimacy and, and that being met, whether it's trust for security, whether it's trust for perfection, protection, that, that you're going to be secure, that I, I'm going to be safe, trust. That, that, we could all have trust issues in the different relationships that we have, but as long as there's trust issues, the relationship can never be what it needs to be. And if we're going to unlock lasting love, then we have to express trust. That, that, that we have to do that in a way, and, and there's, there's one way to do it that I don't really recommend. And, and when, when, when he's going to Best Buy, when she's going to the mall, I don't recommend that you go, I trust you! That's probably not the best way, but just a simple nudge that says, I'm trusting you. There's something psychologically that takes place that when somebody's telling us that they trust us, that we want to rise to the occasion, that we want to live up to their trust level. And the more that trust is expressed, the more we have to aim for to live up to. And we need to express trust if we're going to unlock a lasting love. See, lasting love, it can't just coast in complacency. That's, that's not lasting. That, that won't be what the relationship needs. And so we need to unlock lasting love. And one of the ways is by expressing trust. The third way to have lasting love is to envision the best. Envision the best. That, that when it comes to people, we're, we're usually falling into one of two camps. We're, we're either that person that we just naturally believe the best in people, or we naturally assume the worst in people. And, and you know who you are. You're either the believes the best or you are the assumes the worst. And if we're going to have a, a lasting love with people, we need to envision the best. We need to begin to see what does the best look like? What could that be? And how could I see you doing that? That unlocks lasting love. That when you've got somebody in your life that they know that you believe in them, that they know that, that you're the person, that, that you're just sharing with them, hey, I, I believe you can do it. That when you believe in them, it's empowering. 
It's no longer just a trust issue. It's a vision issue. And that you've got a vision for their life of all that they could be. Instead of assuming the worst. See, when you assume the worst and you walk into the home and, and something's broken, you automatically have decided who it is without even knowing anything that's taken place. Because you assume the worst. And you might even go, hey, I'm, I'm right 99% of the time. And you might be. But what are you doing? How does you, assuming the worst, how does that make things better? When has that ever been something that you could look back on and go, you know why we've recovered? You know why our relationship is so good now? It's because I always assume the worst. That's why. That doesn't work. That doesn't, that doesn't take relationships to a whole nother level and build them up. It doesn't. But yet the people, the people that, that are hearing from others of how you believe in them, how you envision that all that they could be and how you share that. And not some lofty thing that they'll never be able to be, but something within boundaries, something within reach, and envisioning that is powerful. And when that's not there, it's so hard for somebody to be motivated because they're looking to the people that they love. They're looking to the people that say, you matter. And they want to rise to that occasion. And if there's no occasion to rise to, then there's no sense in trying to change and improve. We have to envision the best for people. Don't settle for just always telling it like it is. I, I, that's who I am naturally. I'm, I'm a tell it like it is guy. Let me just tell you how I see it. But what I have to work on is I have to work on that envisioning the best so that I can speak into somebody's life and share with them what I see of how they could be. And we're all longing for this. We all want people who can envision the best for our life. And the people that we love are the people that we need it from the most. The last one. Lasting love endures the worst. It endures the worst. That there can be some really tough times. You see, lasting love is persistent. Lasting love is determined. Lasting love, it, it's diligent. Lasting love is this thing, it's resolute. That's lasting love. Then when it comes to having stubbornness in relationships, this is where there needs to be stubbornness, is enduring the worst. And if your safety's at risk, enduring the worst is not putting up with things where your safety is going to be at risk. But outside of safety being at risk, lasting love endures the worst. I think one of the greatest secrets of lasting love, of a love that lasts a lifetime, one of the greatest secrets for this is stay put. Stay put. That it endures the worst. How do I endure it? You stay put. What do you do? You, you, you don't give up. That whatever that hardship is, you, you choose to hang on. You don't let go. You endure the worst, refusing to give in. And chances are, there's a relationship that, that there's people in this room that need to be hearing this. You stay put. You endure the worst because of what it can be, what it needs to be, even what it used to be. And you work to get back on track. Outstanding people are just ordinary people with extraordinary determination. In all of our relationships where there's going to be lasting love, we need outstanding people. And instead of being the person that's out there looking for 
okay, where's that outstanding person? Start being the outstanding person. Choose to be the outstanding person so that you can be the one with the extraordinary determination. If we're going to have lasting love, we all need to be willing to change. That if we're going to unlock this lasting love, we have to be willing to change and to change for the better. Lasting love, who, who loves like that? Who is it that has a love, a lasting love that, that's always extending grace? It's always expressing trust. Who is it that has this lasting love that is always envisioning the best? It's always enduring the worst. Who is it that has that kind of love? Your Heavenly Father. God has that kind of love, and He has that kind of love for you. That that is the most cherished love that we could ever hold on to, is God's love. And the only reason that you and I are even capable of loving others is because God loves us. 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. John writes, he says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. And anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much He loved us by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us in His love is brought to full expression in us. To unlock lasting love, you must allow God's love to flow through you. You have to know His love in order for His love to flow through you. You have to receive His love in order to unlock this lasting love. Last verse of the day, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. It's greater than faith. It's greater than hope. The greatest of these is love. So we started this series saying the best use of life is love. Let's finish the series saying the greatest use of life is love. I know it's just semantics, but it's significant enough for us to think about. That the greatest use of life is love. It's the greatest purpose that we could ever fulfill is to love, to love God and to love people. It's the greatest use of And God's love can't flow through us unless it's in us. That until we experience the love of our Heavenly Father, we can't let His love flow through us. We won't truly know all of what love could be until we know His love. Do you know His love? Have you unlocked that love that is being offered to you? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Close your eyes and... I want to ask you this morning, if, if you're somebody that you're here and you're, you're hearing about this, whether you've been hearing about it for a few weeks, whether you're here for the very first time, and you're hearing about this, this love, and the love that our Heavenly Father has, and it's a perfect love. And the only way that we have any kind of capacity to love is because He loves first. But maybe for you, you've never really received that love and received the forgiveness that God offers us through His Son. And maybe today needs to be the day that that you're going to unlock this lasting love, this love that's going to last for an eternity, the love of your Heavenly Father. And so I want to ask you this morning, 
Are you somebody that, that you crave and you want this love that you've never received before? Is that you? Do you want this? Do you want to take hold of this? Do you want to know how? Do you want to receive this? Because if that's you, would you just lift up your hand and make eye contact with me real quickly and say, Will, that's me. That I want this lasting love. I see you. That this is a love that, that I need to unlock and, and tell me what I've got to do to get it. But I want it. I see you. Is there anybody else this morning that you would say, I, I need this. I want this. Today is my day of unlocking lasting love. If this is you, I want to lead you in a time of prayer with your Heavenly Father. And that you would just pray this prayer silently in your heart. Your Heavenly Father will hear you. There's nothing magical about these words. It's about the condition of your heart and the confession that's going to come with your lips of you believing in His Son and embracing that to accept your Heavenly Father's love for you. So pray this with me right where you are. If this is you, ready to unlock lasting love with your Heavenly Father for the first time. Heavenly Father, I need your love. And I admit I don't deserve it, but I desperately need it. Thank you for loving me beyond what I deserve. Jesus, today, I want to put my faith and my hope and my trust in you. That today would be the day that I would be forgiven of all of my sins, all of my faults, all my failures. And that I would be brought to a right standing relationship with my Heavenly Father. So today I apply all that I know of who I am to all that I know of who you are to begin this journey. And I'm committed to grow in my relationship with you. Thank you for the gift of forgiveness, for the gift of salvation. Jesus, it's in your name I pray. Amen. And if that was you, then we celebrate that. And we say, welcome to the family of God. <laughs> that you have unlocked eternal, lasting love with that relationship with your Heavenly Father.